Good afternoon, everybody. We are with the Berea Chamber of Commerce today, and today we are getting ready to take a tour of CASA, which is the Court Appointed Special Advocates. So we are here with Victoria Benj in Richmond, Kentucky. So Victoria, tell us a little bit about the program and show us where you're at. Well, thank you for being with us. We're so excited that you are tuning in to us. We are here at the courthouse. I say it's a big white courthouse on Main Street, and we are in the basement of it. So we'll take you in and show you around. Yay! So I'm going to do a little span here so we can kind of see where we're located here off the back side of the courthouse in Richmond, Kentucky. And we're getting ready to go in the downstairs stairwell. And this is the side that is facing the post office side of the courthouse. It's where we're standing in back of it. So we're going down. All right. Victoria, so this is your office. This is our office. This is my office. It's a lot of stuff. Mine, don't mind it. Um, <laughs> this is where a lot happens. Um, but CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. And what we do is we train community volunteers to be advocates on behalf of abused and neglected children in the family court system. So that means that a child has to be um, abused or neglected by a relative or a parent or a caregiver, somebody close to them. It can't be a stranger or anything like that. And they range from 0 to 18 years old. And really, we just provide a consistent voice for them in the courtroom. Because everybody's arguing about different things in the courtroom, and we are there solely for that child. And so our volunteers meet with their kids at least monthly, and just to build a connection with them. They meet with biological parents, foster parents, social workers, teachers, therapists, everybody kind of involved with the kid's life. And they collect records. Uh, school records, therapy records, medical records, um, and with all of this information, they make recommendations to the court about what is in the child's best interest. So kind of similar to a social worker, but we are not social workers, um, and our volunteers, they really build a relationship with these kids. They're the one consistent person involved in this child's life from start to end. So we stay involved through the whole process. It's about one to two years that our volunteers stay with these kids. And when we close, it either is return to parent, um, permanent custody to a relative, or adoption. So that's when we finish our role, but our volunteers become such a part of these kids' lives that they stay involved forever. I was a volunteer way before I had this position, and I'm still in touch with my kids that I was a volunteer for. So it is really just a consistent person that they can rely on that they know is going to be there for them. I mean, how many of us haven't had some kind of a mentor or a role model or somebody that, you know, genuinely cared about you when you were a, ch a child and you don't remember that person now as an adult? I mean, that's, you know, that person stays with them forever. Exactly. And we just say it's just one person to change their life. And in Madison and Clark counties, we serve both counties because it's the same judicial area. Um, in 2020, there were 752 abused and neglected children, and those are substantiated cases. So that means that there is enough proof for the court to say that that abuse and neglect happened. Kentucky is number one in the nation for child abuse, so we have a huge problem here. Number one. Number one. We are the top of the list, and we are always within the top three every year. So last year we were number one. That is not a statistic we want to be number one in. No, not at all. And so, and everybody asks, you know, why? I don't know why. I think it could be to do with our reporting. It could be due to all sorts of things, but we are number one. So we always need people to step up and help these kids. In Kentucky, on average, kids will have seven different foster homes that they'll move between uh, during their time in foster care. They will have a handful, or if not more, social workers that will come in and out. Um, our social workers are overworked. They have far too many cases. On average, they have about 30 to 40 cases. That they're trying, per social worker. Per social worker. That they're trying to just do the best they can. So we really help them because our volunteers only have one case, which is a child or sibling set. So they really dedicate time and get a lot of information that they relate to the social worker. So it is a huge thing. It's a benefit. Everybody always asks me, what good is it to have another person involved in these kids' lives? 
And the biggest thing is kids that we serve achieve permanency seven and a half months sooner than kids without a cause to volunteer on average. And a lot can happen in seven and a half months. Exactly. Especially as a child. Yes. I mean, and they can have, you know, forever home and the same school and just stability that they all crave and need really badly. And, and 90% of the kids that we serve never re-enter the system. And that's through foster care again, juvenile um, detention, and incarceration as an adult. So we really strive to break that cycle of abuse and neglect for these kids. So 90%, 90%. don't re-enter. That is well worth the volunteer effort exactly. to be. I mean, these are, we're, you're really, really changing kids' lives. Yes, and we try, you know, it's really just about being that one person that they can count on because they've been let down so much by the whole system. And they know, you know, when they volunteer comes, they're, they're going to come back. If they're not just going to disappear on them. And so it's a huge benefit to these kids. And it's for a volunteer, you get so much satisfaction. You see these kids grow and flourish and do amazing little things. And they are precious. And they make my day every day. So I love it. <laughs> we can tell you love working with the kids. That's they amazing. Do. And so how many kids did you say are, are currently in your program, and how many volunteers do you have with your program here at CASA? Yes, yeah, so we are currently serving 97 children between the two counties, and we just expanded to Clark County right before the pandemic hit, so we're still trying to figure that all out. Um, but we're of, of those 97, 20 of them are Clark County kids. The rest are Madison County kids. And... Um, and last year in 2020, we served 114 kids. So the difference with those are kids that exited the system, either got adopted or got returned home to their family. And, and we have 66 active volunteers. So those are volunteers out in the community doing amazing things, but we always need more because 97 kids is not 752, which I would love to be at 100% serving these kids because they all deserve somebody. So you had contacted the Berea Chamber because you have a volunteer training coming up. We do. So talk a little bit about and tell people what they can expect and what it takes to become a volunteer with CASA. Yeah, absolutely. So volunteers, they have to be at least 21 years or older, and they can't be a foster parent just because that is a conflict of interest because you're working with the same parties through different roles, and they have to pass background checks, make sure you're good on that. <laughs> And you have to attend a 30-hour training. And that training just really gives you insight into the child welfare system as a whole and everything that you're expected to do and what's not our role because we're not a social worker, we're not an attorney, right? And in that 30 hours, you get to know us. I like to call us, we're the CASA family, right? As soon as you walk into that training, I'm going to know everything about you and I want you to call me if you're pregnant, if you're getting married, whatever, right? Like, we are a family, I want to know all about you. And so it's just an amazing time to really connect. And as I said, these are community volunteers. You don't have to have a particular background. You don't have to be, have any education level. It is anybody because all it is is just somebody that really cares about kids and wants to make a difference. And so our next training is starting February 8th, which is a Monday, and it'll be all virtual. And it lasts about a month. Um, and not every day, it's just on the Mondays that we do it, and meet and kind of discuss over Zoom kind of what our role is. We'll see, it's the first time we've done a virtual training. Um, I really like in-person trainings, because again, I like to know the volunteers, I like to know everything about them, but it'll be great. And we have eight people already signed up, so please, if you have any inkling to do it, please reach out to me. And I took me two years probably before I went through volunteer training just because I was like, I don't have time. I don't, I don't know if I can do this. But on average, our volunteers spend five to ten hours a month working their case and visiting their kids. I promise you have five to ten hours a month. It's not that much time. And we always are flexible. We work around your schedule. You don't have to visit these kids during business hours or you can visit them whenever you want. Whenever it works for you, weekends. Whenever we really try to be as flexible as we can. And our volunteers always are supported by staff. So we have what was called a volunteer coordinator, and they supervise volunteers and they go on first visits with volunteers. They help with any recommendations to the court. They really just kind of hold your hand and help you along the way. So you're never alone in this and trying to figure it out. <laughs>
And I bet it brings a smile to those kids' faces when they get to see their court-appointed special advocate show up to, for, to be part of their life. Absolutely. And, you know, once that relationship is built, they will run out the door to greet you. They really do. They'll text you. They will be absolutely thrilled. And just that they have somebody to count on because so many people have let them down in their lives. And we do a big thing around the holidays, and we do a giving tree. So we put all of our kids on a tree. And we have community members take each kid, and each kid writes their wishes and their needs for the holidays. And this year, all of our kids got taken in about two hours. Um, really? Yes. And there was 115 on the tree. So. 115, and in two hours, all of your tree. Oh, that's exciting news. And Congratulations. Each, thank you. I was happy. It was really stressful. I was like, I don't know how COVID is going to impact this, but they were all gone within two hours. And each kid got about two trash bags full of brand new stuff that they wanted and needed. And all of them were delivered to our office on time, and all of our volunteers got them out before the end of December. So that is a fantastic time. That is the highlight of my job. We get cards, we get thank you notes from these kids just because they appreciate it so much. And oftentimes they have very little. Um, they move between foster homes. Sometimes they are taken out from school. And they go straight to a different placement, and so they don't have clothes, they don't have socks, they don't have all the necessary things, so they're so appreciative. And they may have to show back up to school the next day exactly. wearing the same clothes they left in the day before. Exactly. And it breaks my heart every year when I read these things of what these kids want for Christmas. And it is really, you know, they want socks, they want underwear, they don't want iPhones, they really just want the basics of life. So. Is precious they make me smile every day and these are kids that we could all be out there helping and serving and exactly. it, it speaks volumes to your volunteers that you had that many kids chosen right there at Christmas time and everybody brought their things back on time and they delivered did. on time yes it was it was made me it made my day <laughs> it was really it was the fastest we've ever gotten them in and out um, so it was amazing so tell us a little bit about your office and, you know, what people come to your office for and is there other locations that the kids and the volunteers can use while they're here when they maybe come to meet with the kids that first time? Yeah, so in our office, it, uh, I feel like it's overcrowded. It's got stuff <laughs> everywhere. We've got things hidden everywhere. Um, but it is really all of our filing cabinets, all of this information is confidential, so that's all in those cabinets. Um, our volunteers come here just to talk to us about what's going on, you know, if they've had a hard day with their case or, or celebrating. We're here. We do it all with you. We don't ever let you do it on your own. Um, we have a board of directors. So our board of directors comes here. Uh, we have community members, people who want a CASA for their kid or um, somebody who knows a kid that they think needs a CASA volunteer. They come here. Um, we just have a lot of people stopping in. We're in the old sheriff's department, uh, so a lot of people ask me where they pay their property tax, and I say you can rent it out to Casa, but your property tax is not going to be paid. <laughs> um, so this is kind of what we do, um, and then our we have another office down the hall, which we'll show you, and that's got a bunch of toys and stuff that our volunteers can bring to their kids. We don't really ever have kids in the office. Um, our volunteers can meet them at their home or at school when they're in school. They can meet them at the park. They can meet them kind of anywhere they want. They just can't drive them. That's our big thing, can't drive kids. So our kids a lot of times think that we're taking them away and I always say, we can't even drive you. So we're not going anywhere. <laughs> we're staying here and playing, so. Aww. Well, you talked just a minute about um, if somebody wanted to make a referral, maybe they know a child that could use a CASA advocate. Yeah. Uh, how do they how do they do that process if somebody knows a child that they think would be perfect for your program? Yeah, absolutely. So just give me a call or send me an email, and I will do some investigating on our side, figuring out you know who the judge is and everything. They have to have an open dependency, neglect, or abuse case in Madison or Clark counties. Um, but once I have the kid's name, and we can go from there, and we can get appointed by the judge. So. so tell us what's your website, your address, your Facebook page. How can people contact you? Yes, yeah, so our website is www.madisoncasa.org. My email address is victoria at madisoncasa.org and our phone number is 859-624-4794. Awesome. And you do have a Facebook page, right? We do have a Facebook page and we are Casa of Madison and Clark Counties. Okay. 
So you want to take us on a tour? Let's yes, go see let's that other go room. see down here. All right. We can, uh, we can stop and say hi to Stephanie. She is one of our volunteer coordinators. And we'll keep our distance, <laughs> Stephanie. So. Hi. <laughs> hi, Stephanie. I'll, I'll poke in so people can say, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so this is Stephanie's office. And it's plain from <laughs> Everything in here is sterilized and cleaned yes. on a regular basis, and we're keeping all of our distance in here. All right. Stephanie supervises about 30 volunteers, and so she has a full caseload. She cannot take any more cases right now until some close, and, and that is just kind of for, um, it's by statute what we have to do. So. All right. And also, normally, we would be wearing, we, everybody would wear their mask, except uh, a lot of our audience sometimes likes to see your lips move when you're spe speaking. And so that was the only reason I asked Victoria today to not wear her mask for the video. But Absolutely. So this room, Victoria, is what happens in here? So this has been all reorganized. We have been growing so much. So I started in January 2018. We're at three years, and I've survived <laughs> all the heartbreak. And... Um, but when I started, we have five volunteers serving eight kids. So we have grown exponentially. And as I said, Stephanie is at her max of supervision of volunteers. So we have had to hire more volunteer coordinators. So Eve, she's not sitting there, but that is Eve's desk. Um, and she is a volunteer coordinator. And we are currently in the process of hiring another one, which is this desk here. Um, so we are crammed. As I said, we have got all the space locked off and everything shoved everywhere um, and so this is their office but also these cabinets we have three big cabinets and these are all toys for kids people always call and say you know I really want to do something I can't volunteer at this time what can I do you know I really want to buy something for these kids so I say any toys you know we serve kids 0 to 18 so any age range we've got um, and they can bring toys and these are for our volunteers. So on their first visit, they can take any of these toys. On their kids' birthdays, they can come and pick out stuff. So it's really just open for our volunteers to come and give these kids something. Can we get a sneak peek of in a cabinet? Of course. <laughs> we've got to see what's inside. Oh, wow. So we have got books. We've got games. We've got Play-Doh. We've got everything and that you could ever want. <laughs> Oh, how exciting. Look at all the bright colors and all the different activities and things that kids can do. Kind of makes you want to be a kid again, too, doesn't right? it? Right. Every time we do the big thing for the holidays, I always think these toys are amazing. I love them. And, and then also we have our... And a lot of times those toys are not the toys that the kids would not actually get to play with at home sometimes either, exactly. where they bump around or move around a lot. Exactly. So yeah. how exciting that it you is. have those here. It is. It's a lot of fun. And, and then we have a ton of books, and those are for our volunteers, you know. As I said, our volunteers don't have to have any background in child welfare or anything like that. So that just gives them some ideas of, you know, other topics that they want to learn about and stuff. So that's what all those books are over there. So if the community wanted to donate toys or books or things like that for your program, what's the requirement for the donation? Do they need to be new and packaged? What type of things do you look for? Yeah, absolutely. So as I said, we have kids that are zero. I think our youngest one right now is two months. So we've got baby, baby, babies. And our oldest is 18 in, I think, two weeks. So we've got the whole range of kids all between. So any toys, any books, books are huge for these kids, a lot of them are educationally behind just because they haven't had someone to sit and do any homework with or any schoolwork. So we always need books for children um, and toys, any kind of toys. And we do ask that they be new just because these kids deserve the best of the best. They've always been let down. Um, so we ask for new toys and so you can bring those and you can call me, you can email me, whatever, to get them here. I can pick them up. Um, but yes, we would love and more because we seem to always run out so we always have to get more so. so for chamber members out there and maybe community it would be a it might be a good little challenge to maybe have a toy drive or a book drive or something to donate to casa Absolutely. within your groups and employees that would be awesome we would love it right. we always share and we love i love taking pictures and sharing what the community does for us because we wouldn't be where we are without the community so and our big thing is all children need heroes but abused and neglected children need superheroes 
we can be a superhero too. That's right. We don't. We definitely want those kids to have the advantage of you know being able to grow up to be anything they want to be. Exactly. You know, you don't have control over your past, but you can look for a brighter future. So. Exactly. Oh, Victoria, this is so exciting. Thank you so much for giving us a tour today. Thank you. Um, just in case anybody's tuning in late again, go over how to contact you, what your phone number is, the website, and where you're located again. Yeah, so my name is Victoria Benj, um, and my email address is victoria at madisoncasa.org. Our website is madisoncasa.org, and our phone number is 859-624-4794. And we are located in the basement of Big White Courthouse on Main Street in Richmond. Exciting. Well, thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you, thank you for being part of the Bria Chamber of, of Commerce. And thank we you. hope anybody that's watching, please feel free to comment. Victoria will be happy to go back in and answer any questions you have on this video. So please make sure to interact, comment, um, call, ask questions, anything, and she'll reach back out to you. We thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you.